Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. And most of the markets are still reacting to Janet Yellen's uh, update there uh, in regards to US interest rates. So the dollar is still just ever so slightly grinding lower, while as global equity markets are for the second day moving in the right direction. And as you'll see when we have a look at the US 30, it's getting relatively close to some decent highs now. And um, there's still lots of question marks in the market about how much gas is left in the tank to get us up over there. Um, but certainly you know, all the other major uh, world governments are working to try and prop up their economies uh, using a variety of different measures. So um, everybody's all trying to work to try and get these global equity markets that little bit higher. So um, sometimes it doesn't always work out in their favor, but that gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect. Um, we are hearing that there is um, big capital inflows back into commodity ETFs as commodity prices are kind of recovering and some of the mining stocks are able to uh, kind of eke out some gains. They've gone through about seven straight quarters of declines. So it'd be quite interesting for, uh, for equities if we do see that bit more uh, capital inflow into commodities, maybe it might push some of the commodity uh, related stocks higher, mining, oil and gas, for example, and that could uh, be your, your catalyst there to get that ex extra growth there. I think margins are still getting squeezed quite hard, um, but nevertheless, that gives you a, an idea of what to expect. Bill Gross, um, who's uh, quite, quite a famous uh, quite a famous trader and analyst, you've probably seen him quite a lot on TV, um, he's been talking a lot about the fact that the global equity markets really need to show some decent gains. He's looking for about four or 5% or we're going to be in some, some trouble, he thinks. Um, and extra news coming out of Japan that not because they've got their value added tax coming in next year, um, they're looking to uh, have the biggest fiscal uh, budget uh, that they've had in over a decade, if not longer. Uh, and they're also talking about doing additional stimulus measures. So check out the uh, dollar yen. So that gives you a, a flavor of the current fundamentals that are out in the market. Let's have a look at things from a technical perspective. So as ever, starting off with the US 30, you can see the, the turnaround we had on, on, on Tuesday following Yellen's comments. Decent uh, gains yesterday off the session highs, still closing positive territory. Uh, it's struggling this morning a little bit to go back into positive, but it's just ever so slightly down. CMC clients are still very, very bearish on this. Potential resistance at 79.79. 83% of CMC markets clients are currently short. Moving on to the UK 100, you can see the decent uh, gain that we had yesterday, still failing to break above the tips of these candles. Again, a little bit negative this morning, but not too much. 69% of CMC markets clients are currently short. Moving on to Japan 225, you can see the, um, the news of the fiscal budget has not been helping the Japan 225. It's slightly reversed, reversed course, had a negative day yesterday, another negative day today, breaking through 16,896. Could become, could become up to potential support at the 55 period SMA. And if we break through that, you're looking at 16,384. Moving quickly on to dollar yen, you can see dollar yen still drifting that little bit lower, even though the dollar is weakening. Um, we have obviously had some, uh, some, some yen negative stories coming out about the fiscal policy and uh, stimulus. Uh, so it's kind of uh, stalling and it's moved lower at the moment, but you still have 111 spot 61 as being support. 56% of CMC clients are currently long. Moving on to West Texas crude, and it careers smashes through 37.59, uh, back through that 21 period SMA, and you could be looking at $35.13 as be the next potential support level should that continue. Kind of an ugly candle to have yesterday. It was massively in positive territory and got pushed back down. 55% of CMT Marks clients are currently uh, short. Gold is flip-flopping all over the place as ever. So I had that real decent gain there on Tuesday following Yellen's comments. Pretty much a complete reversal yesterday and now it's doing nothing this morning. Um, could be some sort of head and shoulders formation. You could have a shoulder, neck, and maybe another shoulder forming. And if we ever do get a break below 1191, uh, then you could be looking at 1131 as being that next potential support. Uh, otherwise, you're looking for a break above these highs here to break that potential head and shoulders formation. Moving on to Euro dollar, and you can see the, uh, the Euro still managed to make some gains. However, it closed uh, pretty much round about the tips of these historical of the candles we are maybe making a series of higher highs. It has broke, it obviously broke above here, uh, but didn't quite reach the highs of, of this one, almost. Uh, so we'll be interested to see if it continues on. 71% of uh, CBC clients are currently short. And then moving on to GBP USD, uh, some important data coming out today. You've got GDP figures coming out, exit conversations still in play, jobs numbers, and there's obviously the steel industry in the UK is in the news a lot at the moment. 
because of the closure of some major uh, facilities, uh, but I wonder if that's actually going to transfer into the data. Maybe a little bit of hand shoulders formation appearing here, but obviously the neckline's all the way down here. Uh, but needless to say, a failure to break above the highs here uh, might be sending some warning signals. Almost got a golden cross there in the moving averages. That gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect. So let's have a quick look at some of the, um, the market calendar data. What is still to come? So you've got GDP today. Um, they are expecting 0.5 in the quarter to quarter, 1.9 year on year. You do have CPI for the Eurozone and employment claims with close employment data for Germany. And then of course you've got non-farm payrolls uh, tomorrow. Uh, exciting times. So ADP came in at 200,000 jobs, uh, pretty much as expected. Loads of PMI data, house pricing data from um, from Nationwide as well, but it's non-farm payrolls that is the big one. And then you round up Friday there, the University of Michigan, Sentiment Herbie and PMI. Well guys, that's it from me. Very good luck with your trading and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next. Thank you very much and goodbye.